If I asked you to picture a Porsche, there's every chance you'd see a 911, that classic silhouette. And because of that, to some, every 911 is just another 911. They're all painted with the same brush. I mean, let's face it, every day you're likely to see a 996 or a 997 or a 991 or a 992. Well, today we are with a 911. There it is, that shape. But this isn't just any 911. This is the all new Porsche 911 GT3. The latest in a two decade long line of 911s fettled to offer the best road going 911 driving experience money can buy. On paper, there's plenty you might be surprised by. Compared to the 991, power in the 992 is only up by 10 horsepower, torque by 10 newton meters. 0 to 62 miles an hour is the same as it was before 3.4 seconds for the PDK. 3.8 seconds for the manual. And the top speed is the same too, 197 miles an hour for the PDK and 198 for the manual. But here's the thing, a GT3 has never been about the raw numbers. If you want a numbers fest, you'll go and buy a Turbo S. The GT3 is all about the sensation of driving. And the lengths that Porsche has gone to to make this GT3 even better than the last one without adding bucket loads more power or torque are extraordinary. The big news is that there's double wishbone suspension on the front axle for the very first time in a 911 road car, with tech taken from the 911 RSR race car. The front axle is 42mm wider than it was on the 991 GT3 as well, with tweaks to the dampers, anti-roll bars, springs and suspension bushes all the way around. Compared to the standard Carrera, the GT3 rides 20mm lower. The rear wing is 20% larger than that of the 991.2 and can be set to two angles of attack, while a swan neck design which holds the wing from above rather than supporting from below means better airflow. There's a meaty rear diffuser, which combined with an aggressive front splitter and a fully panelled underbody with aggressive aerodynamic channels means more downforce without more drag. Porsche quotes either 50% or 150% more downforce at 124 miles an hour depending on the angle of the wing. The steel brakes are bigger and stronger than those on the 991.2 and even 17% lighter than those on the 992 Turbo thanks to a narrower disc. And the wheels? They're lighter and wider, with 21 inch wheels at the rear and 20 inch wheels at the front. Because of that, the tyre contact patch is larger with Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s as standard. The first thing that hits you though is the engine. <laughs> 4 litre, naturally aspirated, flat 6. It's basically the same engine you get in the GT3 Cup car. 510 horsepower, 470 Nm of torque, a 9,000 RPM redline. It just doesn't get old. 5,000 RPM. <laughs> this is the kind of noise that if someone sat you down in one of these when you were a kid, you would grow up just loving cars. I think what surprised me is that it isn't as difficult to rev all the way out to 9,000 RPM as perhaps I'd anticipated because I thought with a manual you'd probably naturally just want to change gear a little bit earlier, maybe 7,000, 8,000 and actually you do get into a bit of a rhythm when you're not really going for it, changing to about 6, 7, because it's plenty quick enough above 5. But to rev it all the way out to 9,000 RPM, it still just comes very, very naturally. And it rewards you when you do. <laughs> it's all about everything else. The steering, the suspension, the brakes and so on. Well, first thing I noticed driving this away from Porsche in Reading today was the steering. Because on the motorway, weirdly, it is beautiful steering. Even the slightest movement of the wheel it feels like you've got a real connection there. When there are undulations in the road, the steering is being forced to move. A lot of electric power steering systems, when you go over a bump, 
the wheel doesn't really move, it doesn't really react to the, to the road surface. Now granted, it's not a particularly gritty feeling, you can't feel every single part of the road, but the wheel is definitely reacting to, to the road surface, to bumps, it's just really, really lovely. Suspension, double wishbones up front, for the very first time in a 911 road car, and it's surprisingly comfortable at a cruise. When you start building up a bit more pace, it's definitely choppy. It's a busy ride, certainly too busy for some B or A roads, but a lot of the time it's just got a really nice rhythm to it. It absorbs bumps that it really has no place absorbing. It's just incredibly competent, incredibly well controlled, and there's so much grip. You turn into a corner and you've just got absolute confidence that you know it's gonna stick. It's glorious. Gearbox, six-speed manual, it's short, it's precise. I mean, three pedals on a manual in a GT3. Doesn't get much better. There's an auto blip function as well, which flatters you, I have to say. But you can turn it off. And the brakes, you've got a really nice, firm pedal that does a really good job of communicating just how much grip the tyres have got left when you're really slamming on the anchors. And the whole car just feels so light, so up on its toes, that when you go hard on the brakes, it just feels like you've always got more and more left. Very strong, very trustworthy. It's just such a special machine. You know it's one of those experiences that you'll really, really remember. And as well, it's one of those cars that you think, in 30 or 40 years time, you'll look back at it and think, God, do you remember that? Remember the GT3, flat six, manual, bonkers. Yeah, I really will not be forgetting this car for a very long time. This is a GT3, however, and there's one topic we haven't covered. Wait. New cars get heavier because they get bigger, as this has, but also because they get safer. They're loaded with more tech. They have to deal with all the latest rules and regulations, stuff to do with emissions, things like that. To combat that, Porsche has looked at everything to try and trim away the fat. The front wheels, even though they're wider, save a total of 1.3 kilograms compared to the 991.2. The bonnet is 2.5 kilograms lighter. If you go for the PDK box, even though it's still a seven speed, compared to the 992 Carrera, it's 20 kilograms lighter. The manual saves 16.8 kilograms beyond that. At the rear, the new stainless steel exhaust saves 10 kilograms compared to the 991.2. Engine mounts on the cylinder head save 3.5 kilograms compared to the 991.2. Engine revisions themselves save six kilograms and a new lightweight battery saves 10 kilograms. Porsche has even managed to save 4.7 kilograms with a new type of lightweight glass. And you see that panel there, just above the engine? That now weighs 500 grams less than it did before. Sounds like something very, very small, but actually it all adds up, all makes a difference. And the grand result of all of that hard work is that this new GT3 weighs five kilograms more than the old one. Now, how does that make sense? Well, it doesn't, until you remember that this new GT3 is bigger, it's safer, it's loaded with more tech, it's got more sophisticated suspension, and it deals with all the rules and regulations that would rather this car doesn't exist at all. Five kilograms, that's it. People say every generation of 911 is exactly the same. 